modern day SOCs uh, use both kind of uh, flip flops. Let's have a quick discussion on uh, synchronous style versus asynchronous style. As you can see in this diagram, that um, you don't have a reset, uh, explicit reset pin here. Okay? Certain reset pin there in this particular library cell are internally connected. So you don't have extra reset pin, which is going to be set and reset of the flow. Okay? So we call it right that a synchronous style of the flow where you don't uh, explicitly provide a reset uh, to the uh, circuit. Now, let's see what are the advantages and disadvantages of this style of the uh, reset. First of all, as you can see here, um, the, the reset is considered as synchronous with respect to clock, which means that the clock needs to be present. Clock needs to be switched on in order for this circuit to get into a known state, okay, a clock to get into a known, known state or to be working. Uh, it will have a smaller uh, area and this clock will do uh, a glitch filtering on the on the reset pin for example unless the if the reset uh, is toggling at the same time where the clock edges you cannot filter that uh, glitch but in general um, you don't have to worry about the glitch on the reset path okay um, and as we said earlier, clock is required uh, for resetting this uh, circuit. Now, we looked at it, this uh, flip-flop, there is a no reset. Now, you would be wondering, how do I uh, reset this circuit? Okay. Um, so let's say when the reset is deasserted or asserted, what will happen to the state of these flops? Good question, right? So in those situations, right, what we do is that we have to somehow uh, put a combinatorial logic or let's say AND gate with the active low reset going to the D input of the flop. So let's say when the reset is, uh, you know, asserted, it'll go to the zero and, you know, it will reset to, to that particular state, uh, this flop. Now condition there is that the clock must present and then the pulse of this, this reset signal should be wide enough to be captured in um, one clock cycle. Okay. So let's say if your reset pulse is short, it's, it's like reset pulse is short, it will not be captured. Okay. So you, your flop will not get into the reset state. So nevertheless, the key fundamental here is that clock needs to be running with the synchronous style of the flops. And they have a smaller footprint area. However, uh, the area is increased due to the presence of this combo logic. And think about it, you have you know millions of flip-flops sitting in a full chip. Do you want to have this extra area because of this combinatorial logic? Probably you don't want because the, really the area savings of this flop uh, wouldn't be that enough as compared to the bigger area of the combo logic. And not only that combo logic is, is present here, that's also going to interfere in the timing, uh, parasitics, and a bunch of things. It's not friendly with the backend. Anyways. Okay. Okay. So we already said that we need to stretch the reset pulse long enough so that it can be captured in the uh, in one clock edge or in one clock cycle uh, and the, we already said that it's not a physical design friendly there there are a couple of reasons first of all that the data and the reset they are going into the combo logic the tool will get confused do I consider this wire as a data or a regular uh, as a data signal or a reset signal okay so if you look at the layout, right, a reset will be propagated very similar to the clock tree, okay. So a special constraints or settings need to be done in physical design tools to make sure that this particular wire reset n 
is considered as research, not really like a data signal, but tool may get confused. Also, uh, presence of this combo logic will add extra delays on the path. So definitely it is a bad, bad choice for high speed designs. Okay, and, and physical design tools are not friendly either. Now let's look at what else we can do. Um, we, we can have a asynchronous style of the block where um, in the previous one, you see that we really needed the, uh, the clock to present, clock to be present all the time. But here to reset the state of the flop, we really don't need a clock. Okay, so this asynchronous reset pulse comes here and that will just reset the circuit. That's good. And we really don't need a combinatorial logic on the, the input of the flop. Good. <clears throat> so reset is asynchronous to the clock. Good. No extra combinatorial logic. So we save a lot of area. Now there's a little bit extra area of this style of the flip flop because if the the cell design needs to make sure that when the asynchronous reset comes, um, you know, the this particular flip flop or uh, or you know all the flops where the reset is going gets to be known in state. That's important. So assertion can be you know asynchronously, but the deassertion of the flop needs to be synchronized. Okay. And another thing that it will be easy on timing because really the reset signal is very clear, clearly identifiable. It is not mixed with the with the uh, data in common logic. So very clean data path, okay, and very clean reset path. Very good. Uh, high speed designs, it is preferred in high speed designs, right? Because you really, you know, there is no no delay here on the due to the combo logic which was present in synchronous style. So definitely it's it's good for high speed designs. Also, I would say that uh, let's say you code your FSMs and you know state flops. I would prefer to use asynchronous uh, flop for the state machine and logic, right? Because I want uh, my flops or state flops to get into the known state. Now for the data path flops where you might want to flop the data bus, right? Or, you know, data signals, which is just like a dummy data. You can use synchronous style flop. I mean, it, it really doesn't matter whether you reset to zero or one or you, you don't have to worry about that. But for the state flops, um, as soon as the reset is deasserted, I would like to have my state flops get into the known state. We don't want to get into the stuck FSM stuck state or metastable state, right? That's very important for the FSMs to work very, very in a clean design, okay? Okay, all right. Now, here, as you can see here, reset can asynchronously comes and reset the state of the clocks. We really don't require any presence of the clock here in this kind of a design. That's great. So uh, think about the situations where, uh, you know, certain kind of designs, you know, situations where, you know, your PLL is not on and, and you want your flops to get into the known state. Okay. So that's where the answer, you cannot use synchronous style. You have to use asynchronous style of the flops. So it really depends on the design choice. Okay. So, I mean, it's always right, uh, you know, a uh, mix of the uh, flop styles, asynchronous versus synchronous, data path, a thumb rule sort of, let's say data path flops where I have to just flop the data. Yes. Use the synchronous style, smaller size flops, right? Um, state flops, right? And Or in case you want to use high speed designs uh, where you can't afford too much delay on, the, on, on your um, logic path, prefer to use a synchronous style. The only thing you have to worry about is that the deassertion of the reset, it must have to be synchronized with respect to the clock. Okay, so that's very important. Deassertion must have to be synchronized with respect to clock. And the recovery and removal checks, which are typically done in a timing tool, prime time does that, they needs to be done. Recovery and removal checks needs to be clean uh, with this kind of a, a design. And that's not a problem. I mean, modern day tools are, are, are good enough, you know, to give you whether they are able to meet recovery and removal timing or not. 
Now let's look at the uh, how do we synchronize the uh, the reset. There are different ways of synchronization of the reset signal before it goes to the flops. And one is standard typical way is that you feed the one to the D input of the back-to-back -back flop stages. These are special synchronized flops. And the reset pin goes to the uh, uh, set or uh, reset pin of the flop. And then you synchronize it and feed it to the um, reset end, which is going to your uh, design flops. Okay, This is one way of, of synchronizing it. Okay. So I, I guess uh, you have um, got good understanding of um, the synchronous, asynchronous style of the flops. Um, great. Thank you very much, guys, for listening. Leave your comments below in this section. Um, thumbs up and don't forget to, you know, press the bell icon when I uh, upload new lectures. Um, you will get a notification. Also, if any topic you want me to, to do a um, lecture, please uh, put it down in the comments or message me. Thank you very much.